two, which of the principal characteristics of solutions are evident in the solution of K2Cr207 shown in figure 11.2, which is this figure right here. Okay, so we just have to basically run through what are the, the characteristics of a solution, right? Evident just means that, you know, are clearly seen, right? So we just want to know which ones are evident, which ones can be clearly seen here in this example. So we have this lovely solid, right? It's got a nice orange color. That's the potassium dichromate. So we have K2. CrO7, just kidding, K2Cr207, that's dichromate. And let's just mark down what the state it is. It's clearly a solid, so I'm going to put down that this is a S. Now, this arrow is saying that we're going to throw this into, we're going to open that cap, pop that off, and we're going to throw it into this. And this is clearly H2O. So we're throwing basically uh, potassium dichromate into a glass of water. Let's just name the state of what the water is. At this stage of the game, the water is a liquid. All right. And now, once the, can we picture that once the, this orange color is going into the water, the resulting solution is taking over this like nice, beautiful orange color. And this, once the K2Cr207 goes into the water and we mix it around a little bit, we will make a solution. Okay. And we made a solution because now we have K2Cr207 plus the water combined. Now, the first question that we have here is what is the state of the potassium dichromate? Is it a solid anymore? Can you clearly see the individual specks of the K2Cr207 like we did when it was a solid? No, it looks all nice and uniform. And uniform in chemistry just means like one uh, unit, one substance. Right, it, it looks like one um, whole thing. So we'll say one form. One form, uniform, one color. So we clearly can't see the solid anymore. So the K2Cr207 would not be a solid. Now, this is a specific state for when you are in water, and that which you've probably seen before, is the aqueous phase. Aqueous, which is AQ, AQ, AQU, right, comes from aqua, H2O. So whenever you're saying that something is aqueous, this means that you are in water. And that's exactly what the K2Cr207 is. It's aqueous. It's in water. As far as the H2O, though, did the H2O change its state? No, right? H2O is still the liquid form. The only thing that changed was the potassium dichromate. Okay, so now let's look at these principal characteristics. Well, the first things first, the first principal characteristic of a solution is that the resulting solution will always look like the solvent or will resemble the state of the solvent. So now we have these S words here. We have a solvent. We need to know what that is. And we have the resulting solution. And maybe what I'll do is I'll put this in blue. Okay. So the easy way to know your S words, there's three of them. There's solvent, solution, and then there's solute. The easy way to memorize which one is a solute, which one is a solvent, and which one is a solution is to just know how many letters are in each word. So I'm just going to put it down here. The solute, and I'll pull this up here. 
So we have solute, solvent, and we have solution. If I count out how many letters are in solute, there's six letters. If I count out how many letters are in solvent, there's seven letters. And if I count out how many letters are in solution, there's eight letters. So it goes by smallest to largest. The resulting, uh, hold on, let me just mix this. Okay. The resulting solution has the most amount of letters, so it's the one that has the most amount of stuff in it. And that's at the end of the day, when we literally had the K2Cr207 plus the water. That's this guy. But now, one of these has to be the solute, and the other one has to be the solvent. Well, going by six letters versus seven, the solute is always going to be the smallest thing that gets dumped into the bigger thing. Can you make an educated guess as to which one would be the solute and which one would be the solvent? Yeah, you got it. The K2Cr207, this was the smallest amount. So the K2Cr207 is the solute versus the water, which was the bigger one, is the solvent. And together, when you take the solute and put it into the solvent, the resulting is a solution. So that's the first thing that we can see that's evident, that the resulting solution will resemble the state of the solvent. And that checks out. This still looks like a liquid form. And the water, the solvent, was clearly a liquid form. So this first uh, you know, principle of a solution is evident, right? You can clearly see that at the end of the day, the solvent didn't change its state. It stayed a liquid form. The second characteristic of solutions is that all solutions at the end of the day have to be homogeneous mixtures. So whenever we're talking about a solution, and maybe I'll just put that over here, a solution has to equal a homogeneous mixture. And remember, a homogeneous mixture is one in which you cannot tell the difference between what's going on in there. So it's one color or one form or it's uniform. And a mixture, remember, just has, uh, you know, different substances in there. So two different compounds two different elements. They just have to have different pure substances. But that's exactly what's going on here. If I look at this solution, can I clearly see where the uh, potassium dichromate separates from the water? No, I can't because it's this one uniform color. I have no idea where the actual K2Cr207s are and where the water is, right? So this checks out. The third characteristic that's pretty evident here is that when we're looking at the solution, right, when that K2Cr207 is just chilling in the water, right, and they make this one uniform solution, the question is, will that solution ever go back to settling? Meaning that will the K2Cr207 turn back into a solid and kind of like go down at the bottom of the water if it's de you know more dense than water the answer here is no once you make a solution the we'll say the um, ions that form or we'll say the substances the solute that is in the solution will not settle and turn back into its original form. So you can, you know, wait forever, basically, and this K2Cr207 will not turn into a solid and settle 
down at the bottom. It's going to remain aqueous. And, um, you know, once this turns into aqueous material, this will dissolve into its ions. So I guess this one is not really as evident because we can't really see it, but we know theoretically that the K2 Cr2O7, which is aqueous, will break down into its ions. And the ions are what's now being in the solution. So the K2Cr2O7 K2 Cr2 aqueous will break down into its ions. And the ions are K+, plus, right, because potassium is in group 1, and the Cr2O7 dichromate has a 2 negative charge all the time. And that's what's floating around in the water. This is clearly not evident because we can't actually see the individual K plus and Cr2O7 2 two minus, but we know that anytime that you make an aqueous solution and you label it aqueous, it's always going to break down into those um, components. And that's basically all the evident characteristics that we can see here. Mostly that the solution is going to resemble the solvent, there's no settling, and it's always going to be a homogeneous mixture. And that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped you out. Thank you for checking out the video. Let me know in the comments if this helped you out. And I hope to be talking to you soon in later lessons. Love helping you guys out on your tests and quizzes coming up. And check out the channel. We also got physics and math videos at the moment with more subjects coming your way. So check it out. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.